Released by Chunsoft in 2012 on the Nintendo 3DS and PS Vita, Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward continues the events from Zero Escape 999 into a new nonary game. Written and directed by series creator Kotaro Uchikoshi, the game chronologically takes place after both 999 and Zero Time Dilemma. For story, the game features a man named Sigma, as sci-fi themes continue to be explored with multiple timelines and time travel among locked room death games testing trust. For gameplay, the game is similar to 999, in which there are visual novel segments of just text conveying the dialogue and actions, with decision points progressing the story into over 20 possible endings, half of which are needed in order to achieve the true ending. In addition, there are puzzle segments, in which many rooms have puzzles to be solved by exploring the environment and piecing together clues from a first-person perspective. Compared to the first game, this installment utilizes 3D models and environments, as well as voice acting. Keep in mind, the game is originally played in a very non-linear fashion, expecting the player to be learning clues in one timeline and crossing into another timeline to use it. For this video, I will be reconstructing the story with the routes intact and the order you can earliest reach them into the true ending. The story only gets larger from here, so let's cut it down to size with a recapitation. On December 25th, 2028, a young man named Sigma is knocked out by some strange white gas and taken away by a masked stranger. The next thing he knows, he's stuck in an elevator with a girl named Phi, who somehow knows his name without ever having met or heard of him before. She's more concerned about the bracelet on her arm that says 3 and pair on it, and Sigma finds he has the same. Suddenly, a talking rabbit calling itself Zero the Third appears on a monitor, saying they're going to play a game called the Notary Game Ambidex Edition to get out, before the elevator they're in drops and kills them both. They spot a safe with their means of escape within, and after solving the puzzles within the room, they find a key and escape through the roof. As they look around, they aren't actually in an elevator, and instead in an odd facility. There are five other people in the room outside, all captured here same as Sigma. They introduce themselves as Dio, Quark, Alice, Luna, and Ten Miyoji. Moreover, they each have bracelets that all have the number 3 on them, but either stating solo or pair, and in the color of red, blue, or green. A little while later, two more people emerge from their elevator, a masked man who cannot remember his identity but calls himself K, and Clover from the first game. Zero now comes on a monitor before them, mocking them and dropping that the real mastermind, also named Zero, is among them now, and the reason it can reply autonomously for itself is because it's an AI made by Zero. It explains the rules of the game, starting with, as the name suggests, the number 9 is centrally important. Before them is the number 9 door, the exit, and on their wrist is a bracelet with 3 bracelet points, or BP. The relationship is that one can open the 9 door with 9 or more BP, however the door will only open once, for 9 seconds only, though anyone with less than 9 BP trying to sneak in will get punished. In order to gain more BP, they must enter the Ambidex rooms nearby, but those are unlocked only by key cards gained in chromatic rooms around the warehouse. The combination of primary colors they are each assigned will allow them to pair up through the chromatic doors, but only groups of three will work. Finally, those assigned as a pair, like Phi and Sigma, must stay together, so they must pick one of the solo players in order to advance anywhere. Dio denies any participation until Zero informs them all that those who do not enter a chromatic door in time and get the game started, just like any other potential cheaters, will get penalized, which is death. With only a few minutes left to organize themselves, Phi quickly explains the three options available for everyone to pair up with and get a chromatic door, and so at this point, the game begins. Having chosen to go through the magenta door in the beginning with Phi, they make their way through the lounge. Solving their way out, they find the others in a common room as well as another set of chromatic doors, but these won't open for another few hours. Learning they can head to any solved chromatic door now, they choose to head back into the warehouse for now with some new keycards in tow. Zero informs them the keycards will open one of the six Ambidex rooms here, and this is how they will gain more BP to get to the goal of 9. Within will be an Ambidex game, or a two-faced psychological minigame. They find themselves prepared to now vote in the Ambidex game. However, as soon as the doors open, they find a mysterious old woman dead in one of the booths instead. They decide to move the woman into the infirmary for autopsy, but Ten Miyoji is suddenly intensely silent and distraught at seeing the woman. Luna speaks up about having a medical license and offers to examine the wound with the aid of scanning equipment there, and they learn she was stabbed with some sort of bladed weapon. Suspicion falls to Kay since he was in that compartment with an unconscious Clover earlier, but he insists the culprit must be the real Zero. Regardless, Zero calls him back for the Ambidex poll. For this, they'll be competing against whomever they paired up with in the chromatic doors, choosing whether to ally with or betray them. If both sides ally, they both gain 2 BP. However, if both sides betray, then no one gains any points. And if one side allies and the other betrays, then the betrayer gets 3 BP and the betrayed loses 2 BP. 
As they wonder whether to ally or betray, Sigma and Phi begin suspecting the other is Zero, and suddenly Sigma has flashes of memories with Phi that seem to come from nowhere. Even Phi has epiphanies she cannot explain. Zero now mentions that should someone's BP reach zero, then they will die due to chemicals injected from the bracelet, but their bracelet will fall off so it's possible for others to continue the game. They choose Betray, which greatly saddens Luna, who points out if everyone chooses Ally three times then everyone will get out together. After this round, everyone's color and pairing gets shuffled, so new teams must be formed for the next set of chromatic doors. Sigma teams up with Clover and Alice and solve their way past the pantry. As soon as they leave, they hear the next round of Ambidex polling has begun, and on the way back, Temyoji and Kei come out asking where Quark has disappeared to. They split up and search for him, finding a second warehouse with another set of chromatic doors. As Dio taunts Temyoji for trusting Quark, Phi now comes in and alerts them to the crew quarters, where Luna and Alice have been murdered. Dio now sows more distrust by accusing Clover of killing them, and also that Quark may also have been murdered, hence the disappearance. Regardless, it's time to vote, and with Alice and Luna dead as the ones to vote against, there is no reason not to vote Betrayer for Sigma, Phi, and Dio who are at 6 BP. As soon as the voting ends, Dio darts for the door, confident in his attainment of 9 BP. It's confirmed he, Phi, and Sigma do indeed have enough points as he wastes no time in opening it. It stays open for only 9 seconds as the three of them leave together, much to the dismay of the other survivors. Moving on, the trio finds a room with environmental hazard suits ready, as Phi explains the pressure room here is balanced to keep a killer virus called Radical Six from getting out. As they suit up, Dio congratulates himself on a job so easily done, claiming he's a hero sent here to save mankind. As they step out, they're shocked to see they're in the middle of a strange desert, but as they wonder where they might be, Phi suddenly notices Dio is gone and senses she's in a particular timeline. As they dash after him, Phi finds him first, and Sigma barely makes out their conversation about some sort of organization, a transmitter in hand, and the deactivation code for a bomb. Sigma saves Phi from getting killed, and Dio simply laughs at them even as they learn a long code combination. Calling his mission a success, he reveals he's a part of a group called the Myrmidons, who are the acting hand of a larger religious order called Free the Soul, though are often labeled as terrorists. Led by a man called Brother, the teachings of Free the Soul center around divorcing the soul from the body in order to cleanse it of notions like greed. With his teachings, he promises the elite ones will be reborn as new humans able to live in a world without war or starvation. Going into it, the leader's history, after his younger brother left was killed in a case that was covered up, Brother would then invest in human cloning research, successfully creating the first 10 new humans that would be the first generations of Myrmidons, each one based on Left and given that same name. After this, Phi forces the password out of Dio for the number zero bomb, now openly telling Sigma to remember it after his jump in case she doesn't. Letting Dio live for now, he is forced to take them to a nearby village as this route comes to a close. As we visit another possible timeline of events, this time Sigma has chosen to select Temmyoji and go through the yellow door. Finding the infirmary, they find their way through the puzzle within, also finding a news article talking about a deadly virus called Radical Six that is killing thousands and demands immediate quarantine of any infected. Beyond, they run into the others in a common room and openly wonder how they got there. Clover and Alice whisper to the side how this game seems a lot like the last one, even having a host named Zero, and wonder if their headquarters has noticed their absence. As they're called to vote in the Ambidex game, they find the dead old woman again and vote to betray Temmyoji for some extra points. He's disappointed to learn of this, believing they can all get ahead by allying instead, and doesn't feel he can trust either of them now. Regardless, their pairings and color change now, and Sigma is now paired up with Clover for the next chromatic door. As they search for more clues, Sigma brings up the Radical Six article, but Dio dismisses it as a fake, and no one else seems to have even heard of the virus, much less any outbreak. Temiyoji is also visibly upset ever since they found the old lady dead, and more so since he's down to 1 BP now. It's clear he and Quark now know each other personally, but when asked, Quark seems strangely zoned out, though he says it's just some passing dizziness. Sigma then confronts Clover and Alice on mentioning something about headquarters that they clearly know each other, as well as Clover knows something more about Zero. Alice admits to their co-workers, but not from where, though Clover opens up and tells Sigma that one year ago, herself and eight other people were kidnapped to play a notary game under another host named Zero. She also mentions this is her third notary game, as she has survived one ten years before that, but points out a different person has played Zero each time. This one makes no sense for her, as both the Zero and Intention are different, as well as the game being played. They're interrupted as Tenmyoji bursts in, saying Quark has suddenly collapsed and he needs Luna to provide medical attention. After scanning him, she regrets to inform that Quark has been infected with Radical Six, a virus that compels its victims into suicide. Tenmyoji panics, and while Cure Call Excelivir exists, no one has seen any around. They think to put him in one of the frozen ponds in a treatment room nearby and have him sleep for now, but Quark now jumps up, grabbing a scalpel and almost kills himself had Sigma not grabbed him. 
They inject him with some soap oil to put him to sleep for now and wonder what to do next. The group now seems more willing to believe Radical Six is real, though Dio still denies it, and Alice mentions she has heard of some sort of bioweapon. However, the time they have between rounds is almost up, and they must enter another set of chromatic doors to continue the game. Tamiyoji is forced to split from an unconscious quark, but doesn't trust anyone else in the group to watch over him except for Clover, even though he doesn't reveal why. With that, Sigma, Clover, and an unconscious quark continue on through the green door, finding the treatment center beyond. They find strange treatment pods within, and think to see if they can use it to help quark. The pods apparently can both freeze subjects in a deep sleep or rejuvenate them. Putting Quark in, the machine can treat the symptoms of Radical Six but not cure it, so it's not a solution for now. Solving past the room, they find an injection gun which Clover holds onto and leave Quark behind in one of the pods, while noticing the records on the pods show three people were in a deep sleep in them until just eight hours ago. Regardless, they hear the notification that someone has started the Ambidex polling early and coming back it's Dio again. Before they vote, Sigma shares what he found in the treatment pods, revealing three of them may be frozen pod people. Tamiyoji has Clover take him to check in on Quark, and when they return to vote, Clover now announces she wishes to choose Ally based on what Tenmyoji has told her in private. As the results pan out, no one gains 9 BP, so another round begins with new groups being assigned, this time with Sigma, Tenmyoji, and Quark pairing up. With more time to spend before the next set of chromatic doors open, they choose to spend it searching for Excelivir, the cure of Radical Six, which may be in this facility. While searching, Sigma pressures Clover to come clean on what she knows about the virus and what she and Alice do. She starts by explaining their SOIS agents under the Department of Defense. She met Alice after the conclusion to the first game, where she was the hitchhiker in the desert they picked up and was actually an agent on her way to their building per her own investigation of the terrorists within. After hearing the story, Alice suggested Akane and Santa might have been the terrorists she was chasing, but unfortunately the group never caught up to either of the siblings. With everyone going back to their lives, Alice would approach Clover later and invite her and her brother Light to SOIS with a need for their unique skills. Inside, she was brought to a room with the other surviving children from the first Nonary game, all grown up, and Alice briefed them all that a terrorist group was preparing a viral pandemic that threatened to wipe out all of humanity. As espers with access to the morphogenetic field, their help was needed to prevent this disaster, but Clover refused to help for both herself and her brother. Alice kept trying, pointing out that the people behind the first Nonary game might also have been part of the same group, but then she called Seven and had him talk to Clover, with him urging her to help since Junpei was nowhere to be found, now traveling the world still looking for Akane. Now choosing to join, Clover began training as an agent, with Alice even saving her from a botched mission, and since then she's been trying to be more like Alice. Both of them were captured before their mission against another organization, which brings her to today. She suddenly has a flash of recollection, taking the injection gun out and realizing the drug within it is the antidote to the relaxant they would be injected with if they fail the game, so one of them can live even through the Nine Door. Running off to tell everyone, Sigma follows, but pauses when he sees Phi spacing out suddenly. Strangely, he can't seem to find anyone anywhere, but returns to the infirmary to be shocked and nauseated at seeing everyone else dead in a bloody mess around the room. Only Quark, who is still asleep, and Kay, who seems to be missing, are exempt from the bloodbath centered around the only one scalpel in the room. Feeling the sudden urge to end it all, Sigma also picks up the scalpel and cuts his own neck open, killing himself. In another lifetime, Sigma goes through the magenta door with Luna, votes ally in the first polling after finding the dead lady, is then paired with Alice, and now goes through the blue door option among the second chromatic doors with Kay. Finding a rec room beyond, they solve their way past the various amusements, find some luminol, and are called back to the first warehouse given Dio starting the next polling early. When they confront him, Clover points out Dio tried to hide an injection gun on him without them noticing, but Quark's disappearance interrupts them again. As they split up the search, they are called back together as now Alice and Luna have been found dead, with Alice being stabbed and Luna dead by the injection gun. However, with too few clues and the polling about to close, they are forced to leave for now. Despite Kay attempting to smooth talk Sigma into voting ally, Sigma deadlocks Kay from getting 9 points and leaving. As the groups are reshuffled again, Sigma is paired up with Kay and they check out the infirmary. Within, they re-examine the dead woman and find her wrist indicates she actually wore a BP bracelet of her own before likely getting killed for it. This likely means one among them is a replacement killer, but to what end they can't be sure. Recalling the luminol in the rec room, they figure they can use it to find out who among them has the bloody bracelet. Still searching for Quark as well, they find the treatment center and are shocked to find the missing Quark asleep in one of the cold sleep pods, alive yet his wristband has come off. With the good news, they return to the warehouse to find Dio and Phi, but Tenmyoji and Clover are still missing. As they search together, Sigma has them all expose their wristbands to Luminol, but Dio then tries to run away. Fortunately, Kay catches him, exposing to everyone that Dio has the bloodied wristband. 
Cornered, Dio confesses to being the replacement killer for the old woman since the beginning, but denies being Zero or killing Alice or Luna. Instead, he claims he was sent here under orders for another reason. Now willing to take a chance, they lock him inside one of the other treatment pods. Continuing the search for Temioji and Clover, as they explore, Kay suddenly remembers his early childhood. He lived with his father, who was a researcher buried in his work and never had a mother. One day when he was older, an old lady came by to help with his father's work and also help look out for Kay, and her presence became the maternal role Kay always wanted. He remembers that she once told him about herself that there is a man that she loves that once saved her life, and while she wanted to marry him and live a normal life, for the sake of him and the world she wanted, she couldn't. Instead, she needed to help Kay's father's research, though somehow she knew it would kill her, but was willing to sacrifice herself to save the man she loved. While younger Kay loved her like a mother, he knew that she loved someone else more. Back in the present, Kay now says that he feels exhausted from remembering so much and lays down to rest. As Sigma and Phi continue on, they hear someone else roaming around, though they shouldn't. Going to check on Quark, they see he's fine, but are surprised to find Dio asphyxiated and dead, as someone has tampered with the oxygen within. Hurrying back to tell Kay, Kay points out Phi and himself need Dio's bracelet to get through the next door, and going to get it, it turns out Dio's bracelet is already smashed. Without it, Kay and Phi will die being unable to continue playing the game, but Sigma now remembers from another timeline that Dio had an antidote to the bracelet relaxant on him. Dashing to grab it, he gets back but is too late, as the second set of doors closes without anyone passing through. Their bracelets trigger, injecting them with soap oil to quickly knock them all out. Drowsy, Sigma still pulls himself to Phi to save her with the injection gun, and also notices Kay unlocked his own helmet sometime in the Golem Bay and lied about it. It suddenly hit Sigma that Kay did take off his armor earlier, and was the person they heard roaming, and thus was the person who killed Dio. Kay admits to this, saying that he remembered the old lady was the same one from his youth that he loved as a mother, and he killed Dio as revenge for killing her. Kay then says he was tasked with telling Sigma something that Sigma must remember, and imparts a special password before passing out. Confused, Sigma now reaches out to unmask Kay, and is shocked to see his own face. Even more confused, the second drug now triggers as Sigma is injected with a relaxant and dies. In another timeline, after selecting the yellow door with Temiyoji and finding the dead woman, Sigma chooses Ally during the Ambidex game, though Temiyoji betrays them since he suspects one of them is the killer. Regardless, during the next chromatic door, Sigma pairs up with Temiyoji again and goes through the blue door into the pressure exchange chamber. Within, they learn the air outside is contaminated with Radical 6 and this facility is pressurized differently to prevent contamination. Solving and getting past, Quark again collapses and is taken to the infirmary, though Kay reveals he found Excelivir in the lab and they use it to cure Quark. They also play the memory card they found in the pressure room and hear a haunting recording of a Mars test mission saying six of the nine test subjects have died and the rest of the planet may be doomed. Temioji recognizes it and elaborates more as he was actually part of the project and there was a chance Radical Six escaped from the test site. He then reveals that Radical Six continued to kill 2 billion people directly, and another 4 billion caused by the collapse of the previous two. However, the recording was dated December 28, 2028, so that doesn't make sense date-wise. Temioji is about to explain when they are reminded to begin the next Ambidex polling, so he puts it off until later. Choosing Ally, Temioji does the same, and so far, no one has died in this game. With almost an hour of time until the next hour opens, Sigma tells Temioji in order to hear about the rest of what he was about to explain about the transmission, when Phi now interrupts, announcing that Alice has been found dead. Clover explodes in grief and fury, demanding to know how she died before she swears she'll kill everyone. As he suddenly recalls information from beyond, Sigma seizes Clover and explains to her Alice took her own life due to Radical Six. He tells Phi to read a precise page in a found journal explaining the virus, which disarms Clover. As the next set of doors prepare to open, Sigma's pair with Temioji and Quark this time, so they go to check in on Quark, who is back to normal. Entering the rightmost white door, they find themselves in the director's office. Within, Temioji is revealed to have a small picture of a young Akane in his pocket that helps them through this puzzle, explaining that Akane is a girl he's been looking for for a long time. Solving their way through, Temioji remembers he left his picture in the office and turns to go get it with Quark joining him. However, after taking a long time, Sigma goes to check on them, but sees no one else in the office. Instead, he sees a hologram of an old man who introduces himself as the Mastermind Zero, who brought them all here. He likens the vision of a higher intelligence perceiving the whole of human progress in the same scope as a human perceiving the progress of an insect colony. He then speaks more directly, outright revealing the password to the bomb number one, which Zero claims will help save billions of lives. With that, the cryptic message from Zero disappears. 
Hurrying back to the voting booths, he finds Temyoji and Quark again, and while Sigma chooses ally, Temyoji chooses betray, scoring more than enough points for himself and Quark to leave. Clover has also gained enough points and dashes for the exit alone, forcing Temyoji and Quark to seize the opportunity to leave too. Temyoji also reveals he knows exactly who Zero really is, and Quark gives Sigma a letter he wrote in the director's office. As the number 9 door closes, dooming everyone else, Sigma now reads the letter. Within, Quark talks about how he was an abandoned baby Temyoji found, adopted, and raised on his own with kindness, making an appeal for Temyoji's character, stating that finding this happiness was a replacement for the failure he had in finding Akane. Selecting the Cyan door, they find the crew quarters and a brook for Shortinger's cat within. After the first Ambidex vote, Alice betrays them, so Sigma and Phi lose two points, leaving them precariously with one BP. As they investigate other ways to leave, Sigma learns that Alice knows Clover as they met in the desert at the end of the first game. In addition, they learn of a pandemic of a chemical agent called Radical Six. Clover then spots something that looks like a bomb in one of the crew quarters, and Alice confirms it to be an antimatter bomb. However, this bomb wasn't around during the initial sweep of the room, so someone planted it here recently. However, there isn't much time to think about it as the second chromatic door is open, and Sigma is paired with Luna and Alice this time as they explore an indoor garden. Solving it, they find Phi's group beyond, and with some time, explore the treatment center. Within, they find cold sleep pods, and learn until 8 hours ago, three people were frozen in these same pods. As they wonder which among them were frozen for a long period of time, Tamiyoji takes his time to accuse Alice of having Ice-9 in her body, as he says Clover mentioned it about Alice earlier. Alice laughs it off as an urban legend, explaining the mysterious Mummy Queen in Zero Escape 999, called All Ice, eventually shortened to Alice, and how people thought that it was her. However, Temioji isn't fully convinced. Moving on, they find another large warehouse with another set of chromatic doors. Suddenly, Kay notifies them Quark has collapsed and moving him to the infirmary earlier, Luna, who happens to be a nurse, examines him with the equipment there. After scanning him, she regrets to inform that Quark has been infected with Radical Six, a virus that compels its victims into suicide. Temioji panics, and while a cure called Excelivir exists, no one has seen any around. They think to put him in one of the frozen pods and have him sleep for now, but Quark now jumps up, grabbing a scalpel and almost kills himself had Sigma not grabbed him. Knocking him out with some soap roll, Alice then begins to panic herself, saying the Radical Six will kill everyone and she would rather die here, now. They chase after her and find her knocked out on her own in the garden, and when they scan her too, she has also been infected with Radical Six. Down two members, they all opt to put Quark and now Alice into the sleeping pods, but they discover Quark hid a bottle of Excelivir in his pocket from the labs earlier, but only enough for one person. Sigma then remembers the antibody replicator machine in the lab from another lifetime, and they can replicate the Excelivir with it. Doing so, they succeed in duplicating the cure, but are shocked to find a bomb with the number 2 on it. They also find an odd memory card, but hurry to cure Alice and Quark before heading back to vote in the next polling. However, in the next round, everyone chooses Betray, deadlocking everyone in this round, and proving there is no trust among the group, likely because of the awareness of a saboteur planting bombs. Luna then suggests the only way to break the deadlock is to figure out who the bomber is. Sigma pulls out the memory card they found by the bomb that might have been dropped by the bomber, so they check it out. Within, they find an encoded message, and Alice believes she recognizes the cipher from the terrorist organization called the Myrmidons. However, she can't solve it without the key, and she doesn't reveal more since one of them is likely the bomber. She now chooses to run away from the garden, and Sigma chases after her. She begins to break down pitying herself, confessing how scared she is, and also how she almost killed Sigma in order to get out of here. Calming down, she begins to talk more about herself, explaining how her father was an Egyptian scientist who specialized in cloning, and her mother was a French woman he married when they met during a vacation. Her father was kidnapped by terrorists when she was young, and she never saw him again. She then resolved herself to study and took a job in the Department of Defense to give her access to resources in order to help her look for her father. She was then assigned to the Special Office of Internal Security SOIS, to deal with the terrorists, where she eventually learned the Miranons were the ones who took her father. Eventually, she followed a lead that led her to the Nevada Desert towards the site of the second Nonary Game events in 999. Her car broke down, but an SUV happened to pass by with Clover and a few others. The captured man in the back, Ace, was the owner of a pharmaceutical company effectively controlled by Free the Soul, as he was a devout member of it. After Clover had her first mission, it was a trap by the Myrmidons, and she was captured immediately. Alice came to rescue her, but also found her father in a facility beaten to death. Since then, she swore revenge on the group, and following a clue her father left for her as a dying note, she was about to strike their headquarters when Zero abducted them. Coming back to the present, she repeats that without the key, which would be a long string of numbers, they cannot decode the message. However, from another timeline, Sigma remembers the key Dio gave him, and together they decipher the real message. Not only that, but Sigma reveals Dio as the leader of the Miranons who definitely planted the bombs. 
All of a sudden, Cloverdale comes in, urging him to come help break up the infighting that has erupted among the survivors. Sigma, using everything he remembers from what Dio told him about Free the Soul, pretends to be a Free the Soul member, keeping tabs on Dio and his mission. Under pressure, Dio exclaims he's a trusted member, and their leader brother would never doubt him like this. Now outing himself, Alice lunges to try and kill Dio herself, but Dio sidesteps her and pulls out the detonator to the bombs. Announcing that there are four bombs, he attempts to take control, but Alice, Clover, and Sigma get the detonator back from him. However, a failsafe in the device arms it anyway, and Dio quickly swallows a suicide pill on his body. Before dying, he mockingly gives him the deactivation code for Bomb 3 before succumbing to the poison. With 30 minutes down on the countdown, they scramble to find the input device or the passwords for the other bombs, but with no clues and not enough time, the bombs explode, annihilating everyone and the whole facility. Going back to the first Ambidex room after pairing with Phi and Alice in the Cyan room, Sigma and Phi make the tactical choice to betray Alice, especially when Sigma just somehow knew Alice would choose to betray them. However, he's shocked to see this time Alice didn't betray them, a point he blurts out when he talks to her even though it makes no sense without any cause or effect. At the next chromatic door, Sigma is now with Clover and Luna, moving forward through the archive room. After solving their way through, they find a note from Zero explaining an entire group cannot abstain from voting, so at least one person in a group must vote, else the whole group is killed. As soon as they enter the next warehouse, they get the alert that someone has started the Ambidex polling early. Hurrying back, they find Dio was the one who set off the polling early, but now Kay enters, saying that there is something wrong with Quark. Events play out as before, with Quark and Alice, only this time Alice is found in one of the crew quarters about to stab herself. With Sigma stopping her as she collapses, his hand gets cut in the process. Immediately, the alert for the voting draws near, and Kay suggests they don't all vote, that way everyone defaults to ally. However, Sigma brings up from a note from Zero explaining that at least one person in a group has to vote, else the whole group gets killed. Tamiyoji doesn't trust Dio for a second, so he leaves with him, and Kay is left to vote for his group, as is Sigma and Luna. As Sigma prepares to vote, Luna points out a strange white substance on his hand where his cut was supposed to be. Shocked, he quickly votes ally, as is everyone, but he's shocked to see no blood come from his hand. Luna takes him aside and questions him on why he spontaneously knows the things he does, and directly asks if he's a robot. She says this because she knows robots these days use this artificial white liquid instead of blood, and it would also explain why he randomly knows things about this facility. They're interrupted by Phi, who discovers the number 2 bomb, and they meet up with the others to discuss their next move. Alice mentioned earlier how to disarm them, but she's unconscious due to her infection now. After remembering from another timeline, Sigma points out they don't have to look for clues, as the person who set up the bomb was Dio, exposing him as a leader among the Myrmidons. Now pulling out a detonator and telling him to back off, Tamiyoji tricks Dio and manages to get the detonator out of his hand. However, he triggers a failsafe, and they now have 30 minutes until the bombs explode. Taunting, Dio gives him the password for the number 2 bomb, and moves to kill himself, but Sigma pins him down quickly. They inject him with some soap world to knock him out, but things seem grim in finding the bombs and input devices in time. Thinking to resolve at least one mystery in case the end is near, Luna helps Sigma get scanned to see if he's a robot, but it turns out he's actually not, and instead is a normal human, but with cybernetic arms. However, Sigma is surprised to find this out, knowing that he was never aware of his arms being artificial and was certainly born with normal arms. With one minute left before the bombs detonate, Luna turns to him and says she was instructed to specifically give him a code to open the first gate so he may remember for later. Wishing him well, she looks forward to meeting him later, as the entire facility explodes, killing everyone. In another timeline, after selecting the yellow door with Temiyoji, finding the dead woman, and then voting ally against Temiyoji, during the next chromatic door, Sigma pairs up with Dio alongside Clover in order to enter the red door. Finding a robust laboratory beyond, they solve the puzzles within and are rewarded with a single dosage of Excelivir and a strange journal. They also note the presence of a strange duplicator machine. Suddenly, Dio snatches away the Excelivir, holding it hostage on the guarantee that they pick Ally in the next voting game, so he can pick Betray and get 9 BP, despite Sigma being at 1 BP and will die as a result. Meeting back up before the next polling begin, Dio forces Sigma to lie about finding Excelivir, and so the rest of the group decides to look for someone in the rooms. Phi takes a look at the journal they found that explains the term Radical Six. Because the virus slows brain functions to roughly the square root of one sixth of a second is why it is named literally. Though unknown why, Radical Six also drives the infected into suicide, so for now they have been working on harvesting antibodies from people with a natural immunity to the virus. One thing that's strange is that the journal says that no cure exists and it would take at least 20 years to make one, yet they possess Excelivir, a known cure, right now. Fine now openly wonders if his facility is one of the ones mentioned in the journal where they kept survivors of the virus, not quarantined infected, as none of them until Quark recently contracted Radical Six. 
It's possible that they may have been in deep sleep until Akira was found, but there is no confirmation for now. As the time draws near for voting, Sigma indeed chooses Ally and Dio goes for Betray, resulting in Sigma losing all points and Dio gaining 9 BP. As the soap world is injected into him, he begins to lose consciousness, but at least gets the Excelivir and outs Dio as a lying rat. Woozy, he tries to think of how he can save himself. Suddenly, he recalls learning elsewhere from another timeline that his arms are actually cybernetic, so after allowing Kay and Dio to open and pass through the Nine Door, he allows the doors to close and cut off his mechanical arm, actually saving himself from the poison. Recovering from the shock of the pain and the soporil, he learns from the others that this place is indeed a shelter for the survivors, not a quarantine for the infected. Still, it's strange that they all got abducted before the pandemic happened, almost as if someone knew the pandemic was happening. On that point, they wonder if the old lady in here was the real Zero, and perhaps killed herself due to Radical Six. Inspecting her, they find an ID card confirming her to be Akane Kurashiki, and with her password written on the back still showing her thoughts on Junpei. Speculation is interrupted as they now see Alice looking spaced out like Quark had when he was infected. With a scalpel in hand, she then hurries to kill herself as this chapter comes to a close. Going back to the first chromatic doors and going through the magenta door with Luna, and voting ally in the first polling after finding the old woman dead, Sigma is then paired with Alice. As they wonder who to pair up with now, Quark now begins to speak deliriously about the necessity of death, showing a clear infection of Radical Six. There is no time to treat him, so Temioji offers to handle him for now, and Sigma chooses to pair with Luna again through the green door. Solving their way through the strange golem workroom, which contains an unsettling array of robots, they find a strange key in the safe. When they're about to leave, one of the robots gets up and hails them with a distinct British accent. He calls them all out by name and explains that while he and the other golems are autonomous, they are really more of a physical extension of the mainframe that Zero AI runs, like an arm or a leg. While he can tap into the mainframe for some information, he doesn't know anything about the game or Zero's intentions. After discussing some of the particulars on the similarities between human and machine information processing, he brings up he and the other robots here were supposed to receive a synthetic suit of tissue over their metal endoskeletons that will make them look just like humans. He's about to tell them why he stopped them when suddenly an alert comes on that the robot is executing a rogue process and it shuts them down immediately. Without any time to react, they now receive the notification that someone has opened the Ambidex rooms early for polling. Returning back, it's Dio again, who started it without knowing the abstaining rule. Alice now wanders off to the side of the room by herself, and Temioji and Clover now dash in, claiming Quark has gone missing. As they search for Quark, Sigma runs into Phi and tells her about the robot, but then Luna comes in saying something has happened to Alice. Dashing back to her, they find Alice dead in the crew quarters, and Clover is visibly upset, swearing vengeance on the killer. Regardless, the game must go on, so they hurry to the Ambidex room before the deadline ends. Choosing to ally with Luna since his partner is dead, it turns out after the voting that Quark ends up with enough points to win, though ironically, he's nowhere to be found. They split up to look for their missing members, though Dio also disappears outright after the voting, and Temioji is convinced one of them murdered the old woman. Phi finds a strange bloody cloth on Alice, and tracing her path back, they believe that what they thought was actually graffiti to actually be the site of the murder that implicates Luna. However, Luna was with Sigma and Phi almost the entire time, and soon enough, Kay comes in to announce Luna is now dead too. They find an injection gun nearby and suspect she was poisoned, though they have no time to investigate further. With only a few more minutes before the next chromatic door is open, they reluctantly take Luna's wristband and move on. Dio is found in front of the next doors, impatient and uncaring about waiting for the others. Kay wants to wait for the others like Sigma and Phi, but is forced to knock them out and force them through the doors so they all don't die. Recovering, Sigma and Phi find themselves in a room leading to the security room. Within, they see security monitors and think to use them to watch when some of the murders happen and see who did them. All of a sudden, Sigma's vision starts to get blurry and he has to rest, but when he recovers, Phi has found footage of at least Luna's murder, which seems to implicate Clover. Solving their way through the puzzles, they leave and still can't find the others, but after some searching, find Clover and Temiyoji handcuffed to a sink, both dead due to the penalty for missing the chromatic door. Searching, they find Quark's bracelet among them, a grim indicator for his fate too. Searching them for clues, they find a deep gash in Temioji's hand and a message written in blood by Clover. This unfortunately only adds to the string of strange deaths they've encountered so far with no hope of solving them on their own. After searching again, they're shocked to run into a literal dead end, as they find both Kay and Dio murdered in the rec room very recently. Searching them for clues, they find a knife on Dio engraved with the word Myrmidons, as it turns out to be the same one used to kill Alice and the old woman. They also find the key to unlocking Kay's armor on Dio, but find it doesn't work immediately. More shocking, they now hear the Ambidex polling has been started, yet find no one there. Searching the room Kay and Dio went into, the director's room, Sigma enters in a username and password he remembers from another life in another time. 
They are soon shocked to learn Luna is actually a Golem unit and note the computer says her status is still operational and completing a special mission. It now makes sense that she never died with poison because she's a robot and it likely means she was the one who started the AB polling. Now hurrying to the polling as it's the deadline anyway, they're surprised to see Luna in the distance watching them. Choosing to believe in her like she's believed in him, Sigma chooses ally against Luna. As a result, the missing five people who are all already dead get penalized for not voting, but that's moot, including Quarks who's already been removed anyway. Also, Sigma, Phi, and Luna now all have 9 BP each, and while they can leave, they choose to look for Quark first. After some searching, they find him asleep in a treatment pod and after scooping him up, dart straight for the 9 door. Sigma has second thoughts on leaving Luna behind, but Phi explains all the ways it makes sense that Luna killed everyone else here, or at the very least, as an extension of Zero as a Golem. Sigma thinks on this and urges Phi to open the final door. Doing so, he shoves Quark onto Phi and leaves to stay behind the facility, his thoughts now on finding Luna. Moving to the garden, Sigma knows from another timeline that this is where Luna likes to be. She understands him, revealing that she knows about his ability to transport his consciousness through time. She asks him if he thinks he killed everyone else, and he doesn't believe so. As he's seen for himself, the old woman was killed by Dio for her bracelet. Alice's death was indicative of a suicide from Radical Six. Clover's dying message alongside Temiyoji wasn't 016, but rather Dio written awkwardly, pointing to Dio again. Finally, Dio likely killed K because K had Luminol on him and found out about Dio murdering the old woman, and so Dio tried to axe him in the back, but because of his armor, K didn't die instantly and instead had enough time to run Dio through, killing him. Thus, Luna is completely innocent. Moreover, she cannot be the killer since she herself in another timeline revealed the three laws of robotics being a core part of herself. With that, Sigma asks her to reveal everything she knows, and she begins by confirming she didn't kill anyone. She confirms, thanks to being connected to the mainframe computer, that what he deducted was all correct, and more importantly was per the real Zero's plan. The old woman was the one who gave her the orders to observe the game and made sure things weren't a plan, including allowing Dio in and letting him think he was undercover, getting killed herself, and infecting others with Radical Six. However, the old woman wasn't the real Zero. As a robot, Luna was compelled to follow orders and be suspected by certain players, namely Alice and Clover, leading to a chain of events observed by Luna through the cameras from within the mainframe. First, Clover confronted Luna about killing Alice, accidentally shot her with the injector gun, forcing Luna to pretend to be dead per orders. Then, Clover went to go revive her and ran into Dio, who threatened her and tried to kill Clover but Temiyoji stepped in to save her. Next, while Dio beat them both and cuffed them to a sink when the penalty killed them, K learned Dio killed the old woman, and so Dio and K killed each other. She reveals she removed Quark's bracelet herself by wrapping his wrist with aluminum foil, which blocked the electromagnetic waves his heart was giving off and so the bracelet fell off thinking he died. More to the point, all of these events and deaths had to happen in order for the project the True Zero and the old woman were working on to succeed. She now hugs him, as her body starts rapidly falling apart thanks to the poison she was injected with earlier. She says AI-0 never reactivated her after her first death, but she hacked AI-0 and reactivated herself, something she'll be terminated for shortly after Zero recovers. She says she regrets doing nothing to prevent the deaths, but is grateful to die now in Sigma's arms, though curiously calls him Doctor as her final words. In another timeline, now going back to the second chromatic door, after Alice has been betrayed after going through the cyan door, Sigma chooses to go with Phi and Luna through the second set of chromatic doors. Solving their way past an odd control room, they are suddenly alerted someone has entered the ambidex room already and has started the polling process. Finding out it was Dio acting on his own, they are again interrupted as K now comes in to report Quark has collapsed. Events play out as before with the Radical Six, only this time they found Alice unconscious in the garden, but this time with another antimatter bomb nearby to her. Bringing her alongside Quark, the alert for the voting draws near, and Luna suggests they don't all vote, that way everyone defaults to ally. However, K brings up a note that he found in the archives he was searching, which is another note from Zero explaining that at least one person in a group has to vote, else the whole group gets killed. Since Quark and Alice are out, K must vote for his color group, and Dio volunteers to go for his group of Clover and Temiyoji. However, Temiyoji doesn't trust Dio for a second and knocks him out, ordering Clover to go for them. When Sigma votes to ally with Phi, he's shocked that she betrays him to score 9 BP, while claiming this is payback for him choosing Betray in this same decision point elsewhere. Revealing she knows he can remember other timelines just as she can, she moves to open the door and end the game herself. However, he shoots back her own words and the other history against her, then forcing her to reconsider. This now means the notary game continues into round 3, and their groups and colors get shuffled again. 
Before they move to these doors, Phi brings up the other antimatter bomb they found and suggests they all search for more. Phi and Sigma explore the archives in the meanwhile, as she explains to him the many worlds theory and how their consciousness is moving from one world to another. Clover now comes in, announcing they found the bomb, and suspicion now rises on which of them set up the bombs. Searching his memory, Sigma finds he already knows, and publicly reveals the culprit to be Dio. Thinking on what they can do, Phi comes up with a plan but before revealing it, takes Sigma aside and urges him to recall from his timeline jumps the locations of the bombs and their respective passwords. Moving quickly with the input device, Sigma is able to disable all four bombs. Despite saving all of their lives, there is little time for cheer, as the game must go on and they must move through the third set of chromatic doors. Paired with Phi and Ten Miyoji, Sigma enters a strange room labeled Q and within finds a strange floating cube. Solving past the room, they are surprised to find two bottles of Excelivir, and as they leave, a computer suddenly turns on. Remembering the login and passwords from another timeline, Sigma correctly logs in and now a hologram of the old lady appears, whom Ten Miyoji recognizes instantly as Akane. The hologram imparts a pre-recorded message, explaining that all of this was necessary for the AB project, which was to transport the consciousness of Sigma and Phi to the past. She explains this room is the Quantum Room and controls all of the functions of the facility. She also mentions it's possible human consciousness exists and communicates at the fourth dimension level, time, and this is the foundation of the AB project. She mentions how all three of them, including Tenmyoji, have experienced sending their consciousness to the past and assures Tenmyoji he will see her again soon enough. After the message ends, they return to the others and use the Excelivir to cure both Alice and Quark. As they wait for their friends to recover, they bind Dio and wait for the new round of polling. Five points out Akane is similar to Schrodinger's cat right now, in which in this timeline they haven't found her dead yet, yet haven't found her alive either, so her state is unconfirmed. Suddenly they both remember a time in a different game, waking up earlier before the game started, but within that past, remembering all the other timelines as well. They realize they are in time to save Akane, and remembering the initial solution to the elevator, they hop out in time to spot Dio about to kill Akane. Moving quickly, Phi dropkicks Dio in the back of the head in time, saving Akane from impending death. Akane recognizes both of them and calmly thanks them for saving her, understanding that as an Esper too, they had to move through timelines where she was killed. Them getting infected with Radical Six was also necessary to heighten their brain functions with the real danger of death, just like all the horrible endings to other timelines that were necessary. In fact, them being here means the experiment was a success, and both of them were able to send themselves back in time on demand, breaking three-dimensional shackles and experiencing fourth-dimensional space-time. Sigma understands the means by which they were trained for this ability, but he questions why him and Phi have to master this ability, and Akane dodges the questions, saying it will become apparent soon enough, while kneeling down and taking Dio's knife. She then commands Lagomorph, the true name of the bunny AI calling itself Zero, to unlock her bracelet so she may put it on Dio to allow them to start the game. She says soon their consciousness will leave and return to their original timeline, and now ties a key to Sigma for him to use later. Suddenly, they snap back to the present, where the others put their unconscious bodies in the infirmary out of concern. Alice and Quark are recovered as well, and everyone is glad to report that while Sigma, Phi, and Dio were passed out, they all played the AB polling rounds three times and everyone chose Ally, so now everyone has at least 9 BP. However, after some discussion, they agreed to leave Dio behind and have the authorities deal with him once they left. Leaving together, they all finally pass through the number 9 door, suit up in the decompression chamber, and leave together. Finding themselves in a desert, they openly wonder where they are, and Ten Miyoji openly states he knows exactly where they are, but was forced to keep silent by Zero under threat of harm to himself or Quark. They are actually on the moon itself, looking out on the red earth during a solar eclipse. Alice objects, saying they would notice the one-sixth gravity on the moon, but Luna, who knew everything in the background this whole time, now speaks up, saying they have all been affected by Radical Six and acclimated to the slowdown of brain processing by one-sixth, which is why they didn't notice the moon gravity inside the facility. Alice then protests why Earth is red, and Tamiyoji further explains she thinks it's still New Year's Eve in 2028, but it's actually January 27th, 2074, 45 years later. On April 13, 2029, all of the Earth's annihilation reactors exploded, likely due to the outbreak earlier on New Year's Eve 2028 in the government test site for a future Mars mission, which released Radical Six out into the world. The mass pandemic forced millions into suicide, often multiplying the victims through collateral damage. Those naturally immune to the virus and who avoided the catastrophes decided to scorch the Earth to rid of the virus, and thus all the annihilation reactors on Earth were detonated. Nuclear winter occurred as a result, killing even more natural wildlife, and only after 45 years later have things started to clear up a little. 
However, with all the debris in the air and how light particles are affected in the atmosphere is why the Earth now appears red. Remembering a clue in the facility about Akane, Sigma and Phi head back inside, and Kei and Tenmyoji follow them, interested in Akane. The others soon follow too, and Clover soon realizes Tenmyoji is really an older Junpei. Using the key Akane gave him earlier, they see a deep freeze treatment pod, and while they wait for it to defrost, Kei reveals he remembers everything, of how this base is Rhizome 9, where he grew up with Akane and the real Zero as they built the AB project. He explains that solving puzzles were necessary, as some theories hold that they strengthen one's connection to the fourth dimension, and the multiple options were needed to strengthen their memory retention between forced jumps. He then explains Clover and Alice were abducted 45 years ago and placed in deep sleep for this game, because Clover was an esper whose presence would actually strengthen Sigma and Phi, and Alice was necessary for disarming the bombs. Temiyoji was abducted for the same reason as Clover, also being an Esper, and Quark was only brought along because Temiyoji insisted on it, he didn't serve a purpose. Dio's real identity is Left, the leader of the Myrmidons, who are the arm of the Free the Soul organization led by the Man Brother, who orchestrated the release of Radical Six to begin with. Dio was then sent to stop the AB project by both killing Akane and either winning the game, or blowing everything up. As it turns out, Brother knew about the AB project as he too was an Esper. Luna's role was self-evident, and Kay was never technically abducted since he was born and raised in this facility by Zero. As the pod chimes that it's defrosted, it opens, surprising Sigma by revealing himself in the pod, just like when he unmasked Kay in a different timeline. Turning around, Kay confirms what Sigma now suspects and reveals under the armor is actually Akane this whole time, for this timeline. Everyone is puzzled who the Sigma lookalike is, as they cannot recognize him, which perplexes Sigma. Akane points out Sigma's mind can occupy his body in the past, or in the future, revealing in this case, his mind has jumped forward 45 years. In disbelief, Sigma runs to a nearby pond to seek his reflection, shocked to learn his 22-year-old mind is actually in the body of himself 45 years later, as not only an older him, but he is actually Dr. Climb, who was really the true Zero, the mastermind of the AB project and this nonary game. The man they call K is actually Kyle Climb, a clone of his younger self he will create in the future, who was to be a spare if anything happened to the real him. She then shows him an illustration of the time jumps his mind is making. Things begin with him getting gassed in 2028, then waking up 45 years later in his 67 year old body. After playing this AB game, he will then return to his younger body in 2029, but after the pandemic has happened, so he will be forced to work on the next 45 years preparing for this point again, when his younger self wakes up in the future. Once his younger mind is in the future, his older mind will then occupy his 22 year old body in 2028, where it will then be before the pandemic and he can stop brother. However, to spur this jump, a new threat must spike the potential mental energy built up over the course of this game, and she now takes out Dio's knife and lunges at Phi. Sigma quickly moves to protect Phi and gets stabbed in the process, suddenly losing consciousness as his mind fades. As he wakes up, it's 2029 and the world is suffering under Radical Six, as he even sees a news reporter kill herself on live TV. He is approached by Akane in her Zero outfit, who was expecting him and revealed that she only hit him with the butt of her knife, so he and Fi are fine in the future, but she needed to shock him into jumping. Right now, Sigma is to begin his mastery of engineering and programming to make Kyle, Luna, and Lagomorph on the moon, and in the meanwhile watch over Fi, Clover, and Alice who are frozen in sleep. However, during the final jump when events are before the outbreak, he asks what he can do to stop the disaster, but Akane has no answer as she doesn't know what happened at the Mars test mission site. Sigma's jumping, therefore, will be the key to learning what happened in that facility. As it turns out, the Sigma from the future was in that Mars testing site, where he told Akane in the future that this is where he lost his arms and I trying to save someone else. Now realizing it, Sigma lifts his arms and is surprised to find them already cybernetic. As the game ends, they feel a rumble and see in the distance their annihilation reactors have already been detonated, and Sigma now vows to himself to stop all of this and save humanity. Zeroscape, Virtue's Oz for Ward, has enjoyed the success of selling over 70,000 copies worldwide. This recapitation was chosen by PlayStation Girl. Thanks a lot for supporting the show as a patron, I really hope you enjoyed this complex presentation. If you would like to support the show yourself, please follow the Patreon link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next battlefield.